Gude. What's a pirate box? According to their website, a pirate box is a DIY anonymous offline file sharing and communication system built with free software and inexpensive off-the-shelf hardware. So let's build one. What do we need to build a pirate box? At first we need a computer. This is the Raspberry Pi 3 version 2. The good thing about this is this has integrated wireless so we don't need a wireless adapter. And it has an Ethernet port so it's easy to set up as we will see. Secondly we need a place to store the software. In this case it's a micro SD card. Thirdly we need, or well, it's optional but it's nice to have is an external thumb drive. You can plug it in there and then the pirate box will store all the user data and well, not the user data but the chat log and the um, the uploaded files and the forum on there and not on the SD card which is in this case very funny because this is like four gigabytes and this is 32 so there will be much more space on this card than there. Anyway, that's just to show. To set up this we need obviously a computer to fly, uh, to put the um, OS, the operational system, on it. And we need an Ethernet cable with connected internet <laughs> to um, set up the whole stuff. And of course we also need some power. To get the software we go to the homepage of the pirate box, it's pirateboxcc, and navigate to the Raspberry Pi page. There we are greeted with all the information we need to know how to set it up if you don't watch this video. And we are talking about the Raspberry Pi version 3 and all the stuff we just talked about. The SD card, the wireless is integrated. 5 volt USB for power, the USB flash drive, Ethernet cable and the rest we are just ignoring again. For the installation we have the choice between two different builds. One is for the Raspberry Pi 1 and 0 but we are using the Pi 3 so we go to the lower part of the software stuff and we can download it via the torrent that is provided or via this link because a nice guy donates some bandwidth to get it. So after downloading we are going to our Pi Baker or um, program of choice to burn the SD card. We load the SD card in the program and we just prepare it with noobs. So I prepare it for noobs as well set the image system to FAT32 and format the SD card. The same thing you should do with the USB drive. After that we mount the image that was downloaded and burn it to the SD card. And done. Obviously I speeded it up, this takes like 5 minutes. So I put the OS on the card as you see. As you saw then we will just plug it in here. And now it has like the hard drive. For setup I connect the Ethernet cable. And I will give it some power. Once it has boot up, we configure the software via SSH. So I just opened iTerm on my laptop in the same network as the Pi is connected to and I tried to call the, um, the user on the local address, type in the password alarm, which is also posted on the Nets uh, webpage. And then we see the, the steps conveniently presented to us. And now the rest is just copy pasting the commands we just really need. So at first we start with uh, resetting the password, which for obvious reasons, because everybody will know that it's alarm now. So we copy the password line and use our favorite generator to generate our password we want to have. and copy paste it and also put it in our in our password manager which is hopefully not cloud based. Now we are uh, doing the time settings and activating the discussion board by just copy pasting all the commands. Again we have to uh, ask for our new password and continue. 
to make sure that not so much writing is done on the SD card, you can use a thumb drive for storing data. Um, we obviously have to plug it in first, but then we can activate it by using this line. And then um, the, the data will be stored, so the uploads will be stored there and the forum will be stored on the flash drive and not on the SD card. And last but not least, we copy paste the last commands to activate the media server. Point six is about um, connecting a real time clock to the Raspberry so it can maybe keep the time when it's um, not connected to the power. But this needs more setup and no, not for now. <laughs> So after everything was updated, we just uh, reboot the Pi and then we see if it works or not. Now the box is up and running and it provides its own local wireless network. And so we can connect to it. By the way, you can change the name in the deeper settings so we can connect to it. Actually, we are connected. And if we try to Google something, we will see that it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Because Google runs with HTTPS and they haven't figured, the guys from the pirate box haven't figured out how to um, go around past this old certification stuff. What is working is if you try to enter a web page that is not HTTPS and secured, like the one I just um, opened, you are automatically redirected to web pirate box LAN content. So that's basically the page that is provided by the Raspberry Pi. So we can look into the burger menu and we see like a forum, which looks like 1998, but it's actually working. You can post stuff and submit and everybody will be able to read it who connects to this box later on. That is, that is maybe the ugliest part. We have the nice welcome text here and we have files and about. About has even more text in the bottom and the rest is just like a semi-modern page. Thank you, Pex. We can share files. We can browse files. You see the um, USB drive is being accessed, but we don't have any files there. But we can upload files. Let me quickly upload a file for you. Choose file. Choose file. We choose the camera. And we take the camera and take a picture. Uh, upload it. Send it. And they received the file. No, we do not want to send another file, but it's nice to know. And if we go to the shared files, we see our picture. That's obviously cached, but it is there, nice. So we have the file sharing and we have kind of communication by the old way, old style. Um, the site also features a chat, which says anonymous, but anonymous is boring. So we say user one and user one types test and sends the test. And what we see is user one, user one test. Okay, a little too much testing. I just put it here for a moment and we introduce. Ah, who is that? Let's have a look. It's a message from user two and he says test, also test. User two is actually the second phone that is also connected to the wireless. And it also sees all the stuff we need to know and it can also download the files that were provided by user one. So that's the pirate box. Um, exactly, why, why would you need this? So first things, it's fun to build just to get used to the Pi and to the SSH and stuff like that. Uh, secondly, um, they claim it's good for like preppers if you are if everything died and you try to mesh them together if it's working i don't know and you can like host your most important files 
on the Pi with the Echo, Echo Pack and provide wireless and communication to other people. Um, I'm quite skeptical because this thing has a limited range and I think all people who can connect to this wireless um, can also just talk to you in person and the file sharing stuff yeah why why just don't put it on your phone it has a battery inside anyway and if you dedicate like a few hundred megabytes you will get all the survival books you need the last thing which is quite quite interesting i think is um, for people if you are for example giving a talk somewhere uh, want to have the people being able to download your sheets for example or your lecture or whatever so you just stick this in your um, backpack and tell people that they can download it during your talk from this and this um, wireless connection. So this actually could be quite nice. I think the rest is just for fun right now. But maybe you use it for something else. Let me know in the comments. It would be very interesting to see what this is actually used for. But that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching and have fun building it. Bye.